Hello, welcome to the, oh gosh, the 18th Go Gently video podcast, I think the 1441st episode of One Thing Today. If you're watching rather than listening, you'll see behind me rather a majestic building. This is Gladstone's Library, one of my favourite places in the world and I'm lucky enough to be staying here for, for five days. I think actually four full days, five nights, but uh, four full days here. And I thought while I was here, I would do a walk for the podcast. And it would be lovely if you would like to come and join me. I'm standing in front of some impressive red gates, with sort of maroon colour gates. I suppose they're about... I don't know, 15 feet high maybe? Um, and in these red gates is, is a, a little red door which always feels quite magical and marks the start of what I think of as my walk here at Harden Castle. This is the entrance to the Harden Estate which houses or includes um, the, I think, 13th century ruins of Harden Castle, which is just at the end of the path that I'm going to take you along. The, uh, the modern castle, well, the, <laughs> the 18th century castle, um, is deeper into the grounds, so we're not going to see that. But it was uh, yeah. the place where William Gladstone, who built Gladstone's library, lived. It uh, didn't belong to his family, it belonged to his wife. So I think Catherine Glynn, I think, uh, the Glynn family. And I don't know whether it's still, it's still with their family, their family home or not, I'm not sure. But uh, one day I shall have to go and explore the newer castle. But generally, the walk I'm taking you on now is the walk that I do most days when I'm visiting the castle. I'm just going to pause because there's a dog walker coming. The sun, the sun is just coming up, which must mean that I'm facing sort of west, I suppose, which gives me a nice orientation uh, to where where home is, or where I'm facing. Yes, when I was at, when I'm at home, I'm quite aware of west at home. And it's where the weather comes from. So yes, this is uh, this is the walk that uh, I usually do when I come and visit Gladstone's Library. Um, there's a longer walk that starts with this one, that goes through the woods over there on my right. Um, I'm always really tempted, really tempted to, uh, to do that walk, but it's very long and often I'd rather warm myself out by doing it. However, this time the, uh, the woods are closed because there's some forestry work going on, so I can't, I can't even be tempted, which I feel like is quite a good thing. So my Actually, on my second day here at Gladstone's Live, my second full day, I'm just going to pause again. Perhaps I'll sit on this bench for a moment. There, I'm actually keeping walking. Yes, I would say this is my second full day. Yesterday, I did do this walk and I did record the walk as well, but uh, it was so windy, um, it was difficult to hear what I was saying, so I thought I would uh, make a second, a second recording today. It's a beautifully still morning. I thought, I did wonder, I looked ahead at the weather, I did wonder whether I was going to get a still day uh, when I woke up this morning and saw that the big yew tree outside my window wasn't, wasn't swaying. I thought perhaps I would just take advantage and come out for an early morning walk. So here I am. It is rather nice to be walking as the sun is coming up. The 
So, I know very little about the Harden estate, apart from, oh, and there's another person, I'm going to stalk stop again. <laughs> Yesterday when I was walking, there were lots of dog walkers and I did think that uh, Monday, today would be better, but I suppose it's still early, so people are having their probably before work walks. Yes, I was just saying that I know very little about the Harden estate, apart from and you can just see it silhouetted there in front of me if you're watching the video, um, that it contains the ruins of the Harden, of Harden Castle, the original Harden Castle, which I was reading this morning actually dance, dates back possibly to the Iron Age. The castle ruins here were built in the 13th century. So uh, 13th century? I think so. Uh, yes, that's right. That would be 12, 12 something, wouldn't it? Is that right? I get so muddled. <laughs> Um, yes, that's right. Uh, and I think that silhouette in front of me is the keep. Apparently, um, it is open in the summer every every other Sunday, and you can wander around. But uh, not today. many many parts I can see some more dog walkers heading in my direction I think she'll pause again in a moment I shall just get to these rather glorious trees there we are so here is a slightly better view of the keep has a lot of castles. I haven't visited many. But, uh, in fact, Aberystwyth has a castle. Perhaps that would be a, a good spot for a walk to take you on. Our castle is, is, also, is also in ruins, but you can wander, wander through them, which I've not done for quite a long time actually that would be quite a nice thing to do I have been thinking that uh, sort of on the edge of my pondering mind I think it would be rather nice to uh, every now and again have further afield walks go somewhere and stay for a few days and take you on a walk further afield in Wales that's something to, to aim for but I was thinking that this trip to Gladstone's library could be a little bit of a seed for that, a bit of a, a prototype trip, sort of working out the logistics of it and how to look after myself on trips like this. So taking, taking things slowly, having plenty of time between traveling and, uh, and traveling back and just go very slowly whilst I'm there. Gladstone's library is a very good place to go slowly. It has an atmosphere of gentle slowness, which I think probably is quite unique amongst a lot of places one could stay in. So I wonder if it might take more effort to be slow and careful traveling. I do know. Well, I did notice just traveling, traveling up here this time that it did feel like I was very much sort of entering a, a quite a frenetic world that I'm just not really used to at the moment. I think we're just going to take a little walk up here actually just to give you a closer view of the keep. I packed my Wellington boots but I'm not wearing them today luckily it's not too it's not too wet and muddy. Leopold's Gate, does that say? I think it does. The same colour as the main gates at the entrance of the estate. You can't actually go through into them. But uh, just there, up against the sky, you can see. You can see the ruins of the castle. 
and a lovely blue skied morning. Well, this feels like a good place to stop. It's a beautiful morning, such a beautiful morning. I realized as I was uh, walking that actually I'm facing east, not west. <laughs> the sun rises in the east, which is much like standing at my kitchen window and looking out at the hill at the sun coming out. So that gives me a nice idea of, uh, of where I am, where I'm orientated towards. I hope you enjoyed this walk. Uh, I'm going to stroll back gently the way I've come. And if you'd like to stay tuned and join me for 20 minutes of creative work, it would be lovely to have your company. Maybe see you in a moment. This feels exciting and actually just slightly naughty. I'm sitting, <laughs> I'm sitting in uh, the lounge here at Gladstone's Library um, because it's um, a quiet space. Um, I didn't really feel like I could be here uh, during normal hours, but I really wanted to record a work session here. So it's actually it's about 5.30 in the morning and I thought I was awake, as I often am in the morning, I thought I would just come down and see if I can uh, if I can record a work session. So I'm not sure if uh, this is going to be okay. Whether I'm going to be interrupted, I suspect not at this time of the day, to be honest. Um, so, would you like to join me for 20 minutes of work in in Gladstone's library in the uh, in the gorgeous Gladstone room? Um, I've not brought my ticking timer with me in part because. Um, it's very unreliable at the moment, but also I didn't want the ring to uh, to go off down here in the small hours. Um, so I bought my my iPad and I set the timer for twenty minutes on that. Well, let's do a little work. I wonder. I wonder what you're working on, and I wonder. I wonder where you're working. Um, this is actually the second. Um, work session I've recorded. I did record one in my room, uh, in bed yesterday, uh, which was the one I intended to use to go with the podcast. But uh, but yeah, just waking up this morning and thinking, wouldn't it be lovely to actually have a work session here in the Glaston room? So uh, I'll, uh, I thought I'd just, just see, I'll record this session. But um, one of the things I was talking about and asking about in the uh, in the previous recording was uh, was where are you working? And I think because um, I tend to work in the same place in my studio or actually just recently in the house. Um, I don't think very much about it, my choice of work, of working space, but actually, yeah, I just being here just sort of opens up possibilities, I suppose. And I have quite enjoyed sitting in my room working, which is my habit here. Uh, but I've also enjoyed um, sitting in here working, just over there. There's a really squishy sofa, which is where I've been spending most of my time <laughs> when I've been here. Um, so yeah, I've just been thinking a bit more around that idea of where, where we choose to work and why and how it feels. Um, I have crocheted in public before. I remember posting on Instagram recently. Well, recently, a few months ago, probably now. I went to a cafe and I was. I asked the question, "Should I start crocheting?" And it felt it felt uncomfortable, actually. But um, here, generally, it feels. Um, it does feel quite comfortable. I think I was taught to crochet here uh, a few years ago. I came here with some friends. And um, we sort of had a mini conference um, talking about slow, slow living, slow working. And uh, my friend Mary taught me how to crochet granny squares, 
Well, I was here, so I do associate here, here with crocheting. But uh, yeah, I suppose in a way, crocheting is sort of has been a bit at the edge of my, of my um, where I feel comfortable. And I wonder if I'm pushing the edges a bit at the moment. And sitting here <laughs> at five thirty in the morning is doing that again. Actually, that feels rather nice. If you've listened for any length of time to my One Thing Today podcast, I'm sure I've talked a bit about how I feel about this idea of comfort zones and how um, how we're often told to um, step outside them on a regular basis. And for me, that just doesn't work. I worked out a long time ago when I used to try and do that, that it just made me made me unwell. Um, that constant feeling the need to be <coughs> to be pushing. Um, so I like to think about nudging the edges, being inside our comfort zone, but sort of nudging the edges so they can sort of gradually grow. Maybe it's exactly the same process. It's just thinking about it differently, thinking about it in a more comfortable way. That um, I used to, well, I read a long, long time ago, Susan Jeffers' book, um, Feel the Feel, Fear and Do It Anyway. And I, for a while, I just sort of lived in constant fear and it just wasn't healthy for me. It wasn't healthy for me. So I sort of started to think differently about it. Um, but, but this morning, I could have thought, I'm stepping outside my comfort zone. Or I could have thought, which I did, oh, I'm just going to nudge at the edges a little bit. Um, I think probably it does um, make a difference to what I choose to do um, up to a point. But, um, but it is probably more about how I feel about what I choose to do, how I, what I talk, how I tell myself about it, how I talk to myself about it, the sort of story I tell myself about it. So, so this feels this feels okay, but a little bit, a little bit, um, well, it's a little bit naughty, actually. Um. <laughs> subversive, subversive crafting, no, well, sort of. But there is something quite special about the early hours of the morning where um, generally people are asleep there's a different feel about the world, I think. Um, perhaps it's because I'm reading Moomin Land in midwinter at the moment, and that is sort of a sort of like constant, <laughs> constant small hours, being awake when most people are asleep and uh, discovering that the world is a little bit different in those hours. It is a lovely book. I'm glad I'm reading it here. Um, I have read it before, and I've, I've read it as an adult as well, but um, I don't remember it very clearly. I feel like I'm really in tune with it this time in a way that perhaps I wasn't before. I'd forgotten. This is perhaps, yeah, slight spoiler alert, though I don't quite know what happens in the end, but I'd forgotten about the squirrel that gets frozen. And I was quite upset. I was quite upset. Though I suspect there's a footnote that, um, tells worried readers to, to skip ahead. I didn't skip ahead, but um, I suspect the squirrel is going to be okay. I hope so. A little bit to be that wonders. <laughs> Toby Anson does write, um, you know, she is, she is um, someone who writes about things that feel unsettling within a kind of quite comforting environment, but actually there's a certain amount of unsettlingness, in unsettlingness, that's probably not a word. Which is a bit actually, it's a bit similar to that kind of just being at the edge of what's, of what's comfortable. That, um, yeah, expanding the edge. So, so yes, I'll ask again <laughs> of that long ramble. Where are you, where are you working today? Um, is it your usual spot? If so, how would it feel? <coughs> to work somewhere else? Would it change how you worked and what you worked on, I wonder? 
for instance, I would find it. <coughs> excuse me, a sip of tea. I would find it much easier in a cafe, for instance, to be sitting with a notebook, writing, or um, typing on a laptop than I do um, crocheting at the moment. Um, so that's a. I mean, it more often than not would change what I did. I have crocheted uh, in a cafe, and perhaps you know I should perhaps do it more. Um, drawing in public is also um, for me. I find it quite uncomfortable. So my this place I was would possibly it would change <coughs> if I did it. For instance, it might change how I did it. I might work on some quick sketches, perhaps, if I was in a cafe, um, or work quite small, maybe. Um, so it probably does make it probably does make a difference. So it probably makes a difference. It probably makes a difference to the actual outcome of the work as well, which I think is quite interesting. So it probably is quite good, isn't it? To, to just shake things up a little bit sometimes and, and be somewhere different and notice how that makes us feel. Um. <coughs> I'm noticing that I do think I find it um, easier to crochet than draw in public. I suppose in a way what one is doing is, is clearer, it's on show. And if you're comfortable with that, then it's it's um, it's okay. Oh, I can hear footsteps around the place. People are awake. I wonder if I'm going to be uh, interrupted. We will see. So yes, crocheting in public is already on display, and people do still come and say, oh, what are you doing, or what are you making? But um, I think somehow people doing that with a drawing and a sketchbook, I find more difficult. But with crocheting, there's the whole sort of gender thing as well, it feels as a man crocheting in public, that feels that feels odd. Sli that's like well, slightly subversive, perhaps. I don't know. Don't think it should do, but I think probably it does. Oh, more footsteps. <laughs> well, I did. I did. Um, alert somebody to my presence with the light on. I wondered if I would, and actually it was the person I thought I, I might do. So I hope I've not caused too much of a kerfuffle, but she seemed fine about me being here. So uh, I shall carry on. I just added a couple of minutes to the timer uh, because um, I was chatting to her for a few minutes. <laughs> Oh well, there we are. That's the thing I was a bit worried about happening, and it's happened, and it was all right. So that's good, isn't it? And I think probably I can relax a bit now, because I think probably I'm not going to... Um, I'm probably not going to be disturbed again now. So, yes, where was I? I can't remember. I think I was talking about different places, perhaps influencing, working different places, perhaps influencing how we work.
So yes, do tell me. And as always, do tell me what you're working on. progress on this uh, this cushion cover on this visit this is the final section and it's the smallest section so uh, it's going quite quickly and I am seeing the friend that I'm making this for when I get back so it would be lovely if it was finished I mean I'm trying not to think I'm not trying to pressure myself into getting it finished but it would be lovely it would be lovely to have it done making it up as I go along I feel like I'm refining my technique with each of the each of the sections and I like this one best <laughs> so I wonder if I'm going to make a second a second cushion cover actually um, with my refined my refined technique um, we'll see I shall miss, I shall miss this place when I go home. I shall miss the, the quiet and the sort of easy rhythm, I think. And I do wonder if, a little, if I can take a little bit of it back with me. That ability to just, um, just sit and, um, and not really do, just be. Um, I've got a little bit of a, a routine now. This is actually my, this is the morning, this is the, my fourth morning. I think I recorded the walk that we've just been on, on, on my second morning. Was it? it might have been my first one morning, actually. I think it probably was. So I'm very much more settled than I was when I first, when I was, when I recorded that. And I have been, actually, no, that was the second morning, that walk. It was the second morning. Um, but I have been on that walk um, every morning. So I did it the first morning I was here and I did make a recording. Uh, I think I probably told you, um, but uh, it was very windy. So uh, I did it again the second morning and I did it again, I walked there again yesterday. Um, and I shall do the same, I think, this morning. Um, but that sort of means I've done something. First thing, I've had some movement and some exercise and I just really just come and collapse, basically. Sit on the sofa over there. Do a little bit of uh, a little bit of crocheting, 
but not very much. I'll pick it up, put it down. And um, yeah, it's nice. Absolutely no, <laughs> no drive at all. <laughs> Just sort of sinking into the, the to the pace, the rhythm of here. And I imagine people come here and experience different rhythms. Though I suspect there is a, there probably is a sort of over sort of arching, overarching rhythm. Um, but uh, I'm sure people experience it in different ways and and change it in different ways. And probably depending on who's here as well, it probably changes things too. Obviously, my sitting here in the, in the early morning has changed. Has changed something for somebody. Uh, dear, 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 dear. I hope it's all right. Anyway, it's done now. <laughs> Perhaps they won't invite me back again. <laughs> but it is just such a special place. I was thinking about sort of other places, or other ways I could have similar trips, or places I could go and, you know, take things very slowly. And I'm sure there are places, but I can't quite imagine there's anywhere quite like this. This is really is quite a unique place. And I suppose also because I've been coming here for so long as well, it feels, um, that makes a difference as well. Um, it feels very homely to me, very familiar, which is probably why I've been able to do what I've done this morning and just kind of nudged at the edge of what feels, of what feels comfortable. So I'm not sure what I'm doing with my final day here, my final full day. I do have the morning here tomorrow, but I suspect that's going to be more about sort of getting ready to go and being picked up. So I want to get everything ready to be, be picked up. Um, yeah, not sure. We'll see what the day brings. I am actually here with a friend who came, um, arrived on Monday. Um, and we're sort of doing our own thing quite a lot. But we're meeting up at meal times and chatting and having our evenings together. But I wonder if we might have a bit of a stroll together today. That might be rather nice. Ooh, there we are, 20 minutes, sort of. I think I, I guessed a bit. There, I wonder how your 20 minutes has been. <laughs> Perhaps it's been a slightly unusual 20 minutes, perhaps you decided when you saw this um, this bit of the podcast that you would go and be somewhere a bit different to work. Or maybe if you haven't, you'd like to, and you can use this uh, video again and perhaps go and, and work somewhere a bit unusual and see how that feels. See if it changes things for you. Well, I think I'm going to uh, go back to my room so I don't uh, disrupt anybody else and make myself a fresh pot of tea and I shall edit uh, this, uh, this work session into the podcast and uh, upload it for you to watch very soon, probably when I get back from the library. Thank you so much for joining me both for my walk and for this, uh, this 20 minutes of creative work. If you enjoy these podcasts, please do give them the thumbs up on uh, on on YouTube and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and please do spread the word I'd be very very grateful and if you'd like more of, of what I'm doing um, more work sessions um, a pondering session a regular pondering session when I just uh, set the timer and we ponder together for about 20 minutes and some regular vlog posts as well and some podcast extra extras then do come over to patreon and see what I'm offering there. Patreon is the thing that makes it possible for me to continue 
to make these podcasts. So I'd be very grateful for any support that uh, you're able to give me there. Take care. I shall see you in the next one when I won't be sitting in quite such an amazing spot, but I wonder, I wonder where I might be sitting. Take care, bye-bye.